Hello, hello, and welcome to the Off Grid Dev Stream. Um, thanks for bearing with us. We have a very special episode on tonight. Um, we've got Mitch Altman from the hardware hacking area, best known as the inventor of the TV Beagon. Um, my friends and I have uh, been and done soldering with him and made uh, many a TV switch off with his uh, help and advice. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I'd like to say hello, Mitch. How are you doing? <laughs> hello. <laughs> Just switch screens that we've got you here. And we've also got McFly, our hacker in residence, who uh, basically is the charging force behind us modding um, CCC camp. How are you doing, McFly? Hello. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. Yeah. So, um, I guess uh, we should do a bit more of an intro into Mitch and uh, and what he's known for. Mitch, you're kind of a lot of people's go-to for learning about uh, schematics and hardware diagrams and all things Arduino. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this kind of thing? Sure. Um, I've been, uh, my first ha uh, hacker conference was in 2006, and that was Hackers on Planet Earth, Hope, Hackers on Planet Earth in New York City. And um, it, it changed my life for the better in so many ways, meeting all of these geeks who are showing off what they do and uh, learning from each other. And I learned so much from them and people wanted to learn from me. And, uh, but I noticed that hardly anyone was actually making anything there. Um, yep. A lot of great talks and a lot of great conversations. So the next time I went to a hacker conference, um, I actually I, I thought it would be really great to teach people one of the things that I love, which is how to solder. Yep. And um, so I brought a few soldering irons with me. And that happened to be at uh, the next one I got invited to from Hope. Uh, one of the people from CCC was there, so I went to 23C3. And every time uh, I did these solder workshops, um, I added more kits and it became more and more popular. And it turned eventually, before too long, into the whole hardware hacking area. Yeah. And it camps, the whole hardware hacking tent. And uh, yeah, so since you know, like 2007, that's most of my life has been going around giving talks and workshops about teaching people who know nothing how to play with electronics anything from soldering or understanding actually how you can play with electronics with just a few basic um, concepts. Awesome. And so, I mean, the things like the TV Beagon, you sort of basically came up with some really nice little kind of quick projects that could get people in the door, you know, kind of, kind of the gateway drugs of the hardware hacking world, really. Um, is it, is the TV be gone kind of, that's that's kind of the beacon that you yeah. get people started on, the, right? Well, that's what I started with. So TV be gone initially was a, a keychain that has one button and it, for people who don't know, it has, it turns TVs off in public places. That's the intent. <laughs> and it's a fun thing to do. Turning TVs off is way more fun on in my experience. Uh, and providing that to other people has been a really cool thing. So when I started teaching people to solder, the first kit that I had was a TV Be Gone kit. And it's not as, as um, small, but it's more powerful than the original TV Be Gone. Yep. And so it could turn off TVs from 50 meters away. So it was a fun way to attract people to try to make something when they never have before. And tens of thousands of people have made that. And, you know, but almost 100,000 people now. Uh, and the other kits that I've made, uh, you know, have things that move, play games, uh, play music, uh, all sorts of things. And all using, almost all using a microcontroller, a computer chip. And um, the cool thing with my kits is that, like everything I do open source and all documented and I have a lot of documentation on it. So if people want, they can build it and then play with it and it works uh, after they make it, but they can also hack on it because of the documentation, they can modify it, use it for whatever purposes they like, and continue to learn. Yeah. And my intent is that people do learn and then move on to use it for whatever else in their life. Awesome. 
Yeah, my um, I took my uh, my little brother-in-law who was uh, 14 or 15 at the time along to 33 C3, and uh, as soon as he found you in the hardware hacking area, that was all that he spent the whole three days in, was um, making the doing the initial workshop with you with the breadboard and then buying the kit and making a smaller version and then sort of asking you questions about what else could he do with it and this that and the other. It was it was really for me, it was really uh, rewarding to see someone who had not been introduced to kind of hacker culture at all before um, go straight into CCC and find something so engaging with you. So, so yeah, I, I always cherish that memory. Um, so, McFly, whereabouts in uh, CCC Camp 19 oh, totally cool. was the yeah. hack hardware hacking area? We got you, McFly. You're muted, I think. Yep, I'm still muted. Um, I'm uh, still copying some files around in the background uh, because we've been accidentally at the moment. Um, oh, okay. Thanks. So the hardware hacking area is just in front of Milliways. It's actually part of Milliways. Yep. Um, nice. But if you give me another two minutes, then I have all the files ready. Okay. Well, um, Mitch, can the you tell us any? The sound seems to be a bit difficult at the moment. Okay, well, we can hear you fine, but um, you, you have your two minutes getting your prep done and I'll get Mitch to see whether he can remember any fun anecdotes from camp that year that we can try and maybe put into the mod. Like, um, So, oh, well, actually, I can give you a bit more background on how the mods work and what, what kind of thing we can do with them, right? Because um, this is your first introduction to off-grid, really, which you're seeing the behind the scenes. It's like going to a theater show and being behind the curtain instead of front of it. Um, essentially, off-grid is a game where you play as a technophobe dad whose daughter is a hacktivist. And uh, essentially, she, um, she has uh, been poking around in places that she uh, might get in trouble for doing so. And over breakfast, she gets bundled into the back of a van. And so her friends get in touch and, and tell you, that, look, something deeply weird is up. Um, there's a conspiracy going on. We really need you to go and uh, learn how to hack because we're on the run in order to work out what's happened to her. And so you get dropped in these different environments. And the first thing that they do is they flash your kind of AR Google glasses um, so that you can install different hacking tools. So there's like a, a essentially... Um, an AR sort of 3D visualized of uh, Nmap or, or Wireshark where you can visualize the packets on networks and your your kind of actions in the game are going around um, hacking different IoT devices to find data or change the dev device behavior so changing the temperature with a thermostat or uh, dispensing a different type of food from the, the vending machine and then manipulating the data that each of the characters um, uh, leave behind in order to change their behavior so you're not collecting weapons, you're collecting data and you're using it against the uh, the people in the in the game. And uh, and so on top of that, we've made the game entirely moddable. So um, McFly has started making this mod of, he started out just wanting to model Millerways and then we decided fairly quickly we could get other villages involved and, and try and map out as much of camp as we could. Um, and actually, I haven't, told McFly this but just in the last month or so we've got it so that all NPC characters that you can get can be uh, swapped out for the player character so you can put any player character in place and the, the NPCs can be recolored and given different hat, head props and hats and hair and glasses and things so you can actually make we can make a Mitch Altman playable character or a Mitch Altman NPC and have him walking around and texting different bits of data or have um, uh, conversations with people, um, things like that. So the whole kind of spin on the mod would be that it, instead of kind of having to go and manipulate people, you can go and have discuss the device that they've made and have a look at the file system and see if there's anything interesting in there and stuff like that. Very cool. Um, so, I mean, sounds like it'd be fun to explore too. We have the we. I think um, McFly's uh, got a friend from Seabase, which is the big uh, kind of 
um, uh, what's the word? Hacker space, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Um, I cannot understand you. You can't what? What's that, McFly? I honestly can't really understand you in the same the picture. It's really bad. Really? <clears throat> yeah, your audio is uh, has uh, sections where it's cutting in and out. But I understand almost all of it. Okay. The stream seemed to be okay when I watched on the video. Let, me, uh, let me close my Jitsi video. Because I don't usually have my Jitsi video. I might be part of it. Um, hopefully... Should I turn mine off too? No, no. you're fine. It's Which good can you put yours to lower quality? Lower right corner? Okay. Just have a quick look and see. <clears throat> that sounds better. Yeah, it does. It's weird. Jitsi is usually pretty good on this kind of stuff. So the trick is to reduce the bandwidth and down the lower part you have the quality settings where you can review the key. Yep. Default. Yeah, well, so what standard? You got insane and immediately better, which gives me the idea it's uh, your, uh, your uplink actually. My uplink. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised my internet provider today, so maybe they're punishing me. Mm. But the stream looks like it's okay, to be honest. From what I can tell. Um, yeah, the stream looks okay. Okay, I have, cool. by the way, placed all the files here. Cool. I have not all the files here. Yeah, I saw that you'd started to put some of the balloons up in the air. That's fun. Yes, I uh, replaced the balloons. <laughs> They're not standing on the horizon now anymore, like they were standing over there somewhere. So we can probably switch the balloons uh, eventually for... Um, so there's there's there are drones in the game, so we can switch the mesh for the drone out for the balloons and have the balloons follow different paths of data around, potentially, give them little kind of routes that they take. And maybe make them hackable balloons. Can you still not hear me very well, McFly? Uh, the sound is a lot better now. The sound yeah. is a lot better. Okay. Cool. Um, so what's that that you've got there on the screen? I think that is a drone that fell apart. Because I think oh. that's the rotors of a drone. Oh, okay. And here is another one. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, wasn't the, that that was uh, kind of one of the things in? Um... I think uh, that used to be one big drone. Strange. And it's part of some prefab, uh, and it is the Milliways prefab. So. I will now quickly hunt the drone. Yep. Fine in there. Yeah. Is it? You want, um, you've actually got, you want to unpack the one above that. Yeah, so getting back to this part. Good. Yep, it's gone. I moved the drone around and I'm not really sure if I did it the correct way and it might be that I just moved the middle part of the drone around but not the prefab. That's probably so I have looked through the data and I have uh, come up with certain things. So first of all, we have this. <laughs> and go. then but today we have this. Nice. Oh wow. And uh, they both have their advantages and their disadvantages. <laughs> uh, the 
advantage of this one, or the one in the rear is that it has colors, and the advantage of the one in the front is it has a tent. Mm -hmm. So my plan for today would be that we admire the one in the rear, <laughs> and then place the correct one in the front. Yep. Sounds good to me. Oh, That's busy admiring totally, it. <laughs> totally cool. Yeah, it's like if you can see here, there is a slight bump out there, and you actually see this way better yeah. over here. Mm -hmm. But to really see it, you need to go to the uh, to the white version. So the other one, which has the black on there, you can still see that here. Um, but yeah. Okay, I'm gonna remove the rear one. I'm gonna do some things with the one on the front. And uh, as I now have some, uh, to understand some of that, first thing that I want to do is to add a collider. Yep. And that looks very good already. So we have... So McFly, I'm, I'm and now you this definitely whole thing... started to get the hang of, um, of all this stuff. Building prefabs. You mean because it took me like 30 seconds to add a provider? Yeah, well, I mean, just in terms of the organization of things and kind of, yeah, no, I'm I'm not being facetious. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, I'm really happy that you've gotten, gotten a handle on it all. It's cool. So now I have this whole thing even with a collider for the bus. We do not have colliders for the tent struts. Yep. But that is also the prefab version now. Nice. And we might want to put small colliders here in in here. Yeah. Yeah. Is there is are those? And I now forget how I added just the prefab. Um, that little arrow. But I guess there. it was here. Yep, that's the one. And. Um, Posts. Sorry? Yeah, if you grab the posts, each of those, you should be able to just add a box collider to those. Yeah, that's already actually pretty perfect already. That's also good. So Collider, um, I don't know how much uh, you might want to explain that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so, I mean, most um, people... A collider basically means you can't walk through it with your figure. Exactly. Because one of the problems that you're having in off-grid... Go on. Um, so, yeah, it's... it's uh... It's uh, one of the advantages of that is when you have added pro uh, colliders, you could walk through it anymore. Yep. So now all of this has a collider. Yep. So now we can thing. place it properly. It also means that if you create some amazing particle effects... And now I do need some help bus. from Mitch for this. Oh, yeah. Yep. Whereabouts but do you I think, think it was, Mitch? Oh, you had it right before you just, uh, right there, yeah. And um, <laughs> there will be train tracks, uh, not quite that close to the road. Um, we're, far, we're a bit far back. Uh, yeah, that's about right. And um, enough to get lots of dust. <laughs> when people went by on their electric oh, vehicles. No. Yeah, so I can imagine people's sort of motherboards that they were soldering or microcontrollers that they were soldering were not all that happy with the dust. Yeah, the dust was pretty killer at <laughs> camp. <laughs> it took me about three weeks to cough it all up. Was the bus straight or was it slightly angled? It was straight uh, parallel with the road. Okay. And this looks roughly like it fits, right? Yeah. And as I remember, we were, 
We were right across from um, Millieway's entrance there. And uh, so underneath there was um, 25, I think, no, 27 tables with lots of chairs and about 100 soldering irons. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, actually, I did make a mistake over there again. Shouldn't have added it to the master. I should have directly added it to the Milliways. We are really taking with the clusters here because everything else would be a bit too complicated. So I will add this in uh, static. This should be an interactive prop. Then again, I did not get it right yet because I have to go into the prefab. So the, the whole design is uh, made into different uh, parts. And what I want here is that it is part of the Milliways organizational part, which later makes it easier to actually uh, organize all of that. It can be moved around and all of that, uh, the overall setup. So, but it needs to be placed correctly. Nope. It needs to be placed correctly in the overall one. So is that correct? It's pretty and good. Then I also have Milliways has so many props. Mm -hmm. Well, every beer keg is one, right? Yep. So... We have the tables. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, why so is that? Ah. It should move both. If you, yeah, it will move both. It's just you can't quite see the blue outline. You only need to have the top level. Yep. And just about see a little soldering iron on that table as well. I think it was four chairs around the tables, right, Mitch? Uh, six. Six? Yeah. They were uh, rectangular. The table was not square. This looks a bit square to me. Yes. Yeah, that's square. So two on each uh, on the long side and then on the ends. For now, you could put two tables together. It would look a bit more rectangular, getting spacing. I wonder if I should make its own prefab out of this. Um, create this into its own prefab. Yep, you could. And, and move the six be... because we'll have lots of them. It's possibly better, right? Yep. So I would make a parent object. It's better. Oh, um, you didn't need to necessarily delete that. You could have uh, made a, 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 a one in, uh, inside of the other. So now by grabbing this, I can make this a prefab, original prefab. Yep. So this needs to load. Now I want this to disappear again, the non-prefab one. And well, actually, I add the prefab in here and we can now edit the prefab. Once you drag something in and make it um, a prefab, um, Okay. Um, you don't need to delete the old one. Like this is uh, the ratio of the um, 
Of the tree roughly was two to one, Mitch? Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. So this um, is the fastest computer I ever had, still. It takes a while. Um, I have a, um, I think I sent this to you, but I have a photo, uh, a, a drawing of the layout of the bus with the tent <clears throat> and the tables. Uh, yeah, I think it's in the C file because I put so now we need to rotate this by. Oh, this breaks it. Boom. All of that breaks it. We need to turn them around a bit. And I have the feeling that I want to restart my Unity because it needs to think quite a lot. Yep, sometimes you do just need a restart. Unity is certainly a category of software. actually looks a bit better when they're not completely 90 degrees. Looks more human. Yep. So uh, you can talk while I'm trying to do my best here. Yeah. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, I can hear you better. Um, yeah, I mean, um... Well, Mitch, have you got any funny uh, memories or stories that you can share from uh, from camp? Um, <clears throat> this is the uh, the layout. If you can see oh, that, nice. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'll pull that up on screen there. Cool. Oh, yeah. So you had like the L-shaped kind of kit selling desk next to the bus there, and then. Yeah, here we had uh, displays, and uh, this is the the tent was actually sort of rounded over here, yep. rather than square like it is right now. Yep. So that's something that could be. <clears throat> and then here we had uh, people hanging out and eating, and <laughs> and then over here were just general hacking areas, and we had workshops here and we had workshops here so this is a prefab this is one unit i would need your help for that yeah that's fine we, we can do that by either pro builderizing mitch can you pull up a picture that you made yeah so here again is my picture oh where'd it go share screen My share screen is not working right now. <laughs> no worries, that's fine. I think um, I think 
if you do that, it was they were like kind of in a V shape. If you if you put that one back by half, half table, <coughs> not quite that far. I was just thinking like if you did it, like I'm still yeah. there. I'm at the moment trying to pull up the pictures myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was like uh, the 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 sort of tables are kind of like got a little V shape. I think if you make that kind of three table V shape in the three rows, right. and then you can duplicate it a few times to ma match the pictures. The trick here will be, do you want the player character to be able to walk between the tables? I think you probably will. Yeah, we set up that um, that layout by... Even if rather large people are trying to get it through, they can with the layout that we created. Yep. So... So McFly, I would um, spread these out a bit because as we've chatted about before, kind of in a third person game, you have to give everything a bit more space than in reality anyway. <clears throat> yeah. I'm at the moment uh, trying to improve my internet connectivity. The tables were brown and the chairs were mostly black. Yep. If we keep a prefab, we can still change that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the um... Rich? Yeah. Yes, you can. The, um... As long as it's all organized in, in prefabs, the models will update as, as you change them and re-import them and not affect the positions of stuff, so... Very cool. I think we don't need to stretch the tent very far. Yeah, you just want enough space to walk between, so I would actually spread those tables out a bit more each other. I would kind of make them a bit smaller. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like this. Well, it depends. That's uh, roughly 20% smaller. Yeah, I'm sure that ought to be okay. We'll see, I guess, when we get a character walk next to them. Yep. You know what? Oh, wow. Something's broken in here. safe and as this is now also meanwhile taking insane amount of memory i will uh right. close this for a moment yeah that's and strange restart it i don't know why you'd have a memory leak and yep my computer tells me 
have this now released quite a lot of memory. Wow. Memory leak time. Um, yeah, I wonder what that could be. Yeah, things like this seem to happen uh, very often when you play around with those things. Yep. Um, and uh, my memory is coming to an end here, so I'm now at the moment trying to get rid of a lot of stuff that uses uh, quite some memory. But yeah, let's uh, take this for now. I'm going to build this as a level because we've learned something in the last one. Yep. And uh, we wanted to know if it's good enough if we walk through there. So let's try out. Yep. So can you see that? <laughs> yeah. So this is how the game looks. Uh, the colors are a bit nicer. Yeah. Um, and uh, with Laurie, they will now try to... Save you. <laughs> run away, run away. Let's see if I can drag him to the hardware hacking bus. Yeah, you probably can. Wow, this is so much like <laughs> the layout. That's really cool. Yeah, we need to fix that issue that we can't look through the bus. You know, they look all right. They don't look too too small. Well, or maybe they maybe they are. No, it goes up to the hips. Yeah, but they're yeah, but it goes up to the hips. They're floating currently though. So by the time yeah, that's something. Ah, yeah, right. They they may feel a little too small. But if I look here, I think we can actually. We also forgot to add a collider, but that I think can be easily done with now the prefab. Yeah. That's very cool. And the tent needs to be two sides. Above is one side. Yeah. Yep. So my proposal would be we make a collider on the desk, but not on the chairs. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, you, you would end up with people walking through the chairs still. You could make a collider yeah. on just the desk and oversize it slightly. And then, um, yeah, that would, I think uh... we can make them a bit bigger. Yeah, I think so. You look here in the game, there is still quite some space at the bus. And I think that we're directly up to the border of the tent, so we can actually make them. This right. is now 72%, we can make them 85%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So, here we are again. I'm sort of wondering whether the reason that you got that weird offset though is because of the fact that I've got a group of things that are scaling. So, because didn't that did something weird, right? When you click between the prefab and the main scene, the tables were offsetting themselves. Uh, yeah, it moves it, so let's. They're a bit too far on the left, and they need to go a bit down. And first of all, I think this.
there is the first set of tables. Yep, that's it. And it's really tight. I'm looking at the pictures on the other one, but I don't want to put them on the screen because they have people in them. So. This is two, so that would be roughly here. Ooh, we need to put two. Uh, that's a bit. Okay, let's go into the prefab again. And we need to remove some of those tables later. What for? Um, if you look on the map, there is uh, only the first two V's actually are double. Behind that, there is this L-shaped table where you had, yeah. I think, your other things. Um, yeah, so there's, uh, it's, it's kind of a, a weird, layout uh, it doesn't just repeat I can share my screen <laughs> it worked first <laughs> <laughs> but now the the share screen button doesn't bring up a dialog window Yeah, so just looking at the diagram, we've got um, <clears throat> those three tables that you made. And if you can repeat that twice. Yeah, I'm now at four. One, two, three, four. So that means yeah. we need to take away this trade table and this table. But oh, you just need to take away one of those tables. Yeah, um, give me a chance. Let me finish this uh, real quick. And then I'll show you my proposal. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, six. In the middle, we have now six. And I will now repeat the V set over and over, and then we can move the other ones. Yeah. Looks like the. Um... Yeah, so that corner that you just added uh, uh, on the lower left now, that corner, that should actually be a round, uh, um, an arc of a circle, a quarter circle there instead of a square. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can get that all in. And I think that the description here of the model of the top of the bus is not, no, not very precise. If you look there, there's the bus is over, and this is only one width of a table. After that, that should be roughly two. Yeah. So we got one, two, three, four. At, after the fourth table, it should be at the end of the bus. So one, two, three, four. Um, is the table all the way at the left that sticks out the most to the right? I mean, I'm the, the, the table all the way to the, the right um, that sticks out in the middle. Is that um, at the edge of the bus? We'll see when we get out of the prefab. Okay. Eins, zwei oder drei. Letzte Chance vorbei. <laughs> So 
So that all that's weird. Let's look the original one that we copied actually has this weird offset, the rest not. But this all of them. Mm -hmm. I bet they're also a bit up in the sky. But the problem that we don't have gravity that pulls everything to the ground. <laughs> See, they're a bit flying in the sky. <laughs> if we could do that for the next camp, that would be way, way cool. Just, just have hover tables. <laughs> yeah. And then we could have tables like, uh, you know, two or three meters above the other ones and then fit a lot more people in soldering. Yes. Three-dimensional memory also can store more memory bits than two-dimensional memory, right? Mm-hmm. So that gives us the problem that it all fits somewhat roughly, but those are standing outside. Well, what we can do is we can just sort of cheat the um, tent to be a bit bigger to cater to it. Yeah, because that'll that'll feel right in the um, you know true to what it, what it was. It'll feel right in the three D model as we. Navigate. If you don't mind, I would place my tables here and then leave this to working over the model of the bus, which we need to touch anyway, because A, we can look through the I If you go here. Oh, because you can see through the stuff. You can look through there. Mm. Yep. So we yeah, need so to we touch it anyway. The change the tent and stuff when and second thing is that is kind of missing is still need some colors okay. so i would see map which table yeah. yeah at the back of the bus some tables and sort of a chill chill area Why the hell did you place it over here? Ah, I didn't do it in the prefab, that's why. And this one also duplicated.
really don't understand why there's a weird offset in prefab. You have a chance to pull it after this and check it for yourself. Yep. And I think the top, the top is getting more correct. We'll just come around here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and just give it that kind of. So that'll actually be okay. Yep. Uh, this is table number fifteen, so we can move that a bit here. And I think I would even take the chairs on the rear way because I think that didn't exist. And this is table number 16. That just needs to move a bit here. What did you say doesn't exist? This chess. Oh, right. Um, yeah. They didn't exist because there were people standing here and doing things. Yeah, that was where we were cooking. Yeah, and I think this also didn't exist. Lots of fries were made there as well. Yeah. It brings back memories working on this, right? It does. <laughs> Just looking at you, this little bit brings back a lot. No, there weren't tables there. This is at this point. There were <laughs> ah, he wants me to change the prefab. Can I copy the uh, prefab? You can. Uh, your best bet would be to actually disconnect that prefab. Um, now that How do I do that? Just um, because it's under the table. It's right? under the table number fifteen. Yeah. So just right click, and um, oh, that's strange. Well, usually you have. Oh, select prefab root. It's weird. Uh, it's because it's not really treating it as a proper nested prefab. Uh, that might be what's going on with the translations and stuff being slightly offset as well. Yeah, I was expecting to be able to see break prefab connection is an option there. Those two are also in the sky. Yeah, 15 and 16 are a bit up in the sky. Which you can see on the shadow of the legs. Yeah. And this one, the 16, no, 15 is the one that we actually need to break up. This one here. Hmm. So... Or we add it a second time. Just make a different prefab. No, we still have. Yes. Click open prefab asset. Right. And then. It opens the prefab. And I think if I'm taking something away, it will apply to all of them. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Because well... this is solder table and not solder table 15. Yeah, true. Just don't understand why it won't let you break the prefab connection in order to make. My call would be we remove this and. Well, what you can do is you could just drop that. Oh, shit. Um... Oh, hang on. What did that do just then that allowed you to unpack? Yeah, but we ain't like, a pre this is not a prefab in a prefab because yeah. We have nested the table within milliways. Yep. It should be okay with that. Um, that's the bit that I'm...
yeah the offset needs to be fixed but uh, my call in there would be i'm committing all of this and uh, uh pushing it into the github and you can have a debugging session on it The bus is open in the rear, is that as it should be? Yeah. <clears throat> That's where all the cooking stuff was, all the food, all the um, the, yep. the little fridge and cooking. The shows the same. Yeah. So um, Hi. I've got to um, get going somewhat soon because uh, yep. the, the one downside of taking intensive German classes is that I have to wake up very early in the morning every day. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you've got homework today still. Oh, I, I did that. I made sure I did that before our, uh, our stream here. <laughs> What was the inside of the bus like, Mitch? The inside of the bus is pretty cool. Um, um, uh, I don't think I have photos of my Flickr for that, but uh, Tom, who owns the bus, has plenty of photos. Cool. If you want to make a model of the inside. I don't know whether you'd be able to get the player character into it and, and move it around properly. I'm just intrigued, really. Is it, it's, Was it a living space? Were people staying in it, or would, did everyone travel down in it? Yeah. Cool. A bunch of people traveled to camp in it. Uh, Tom was living in it, and uh, there's a nice little room for him to sleep in and hang out in. And then inside is a kitchen dining area that a bunch of us ate in just to escape uh, the chaos for a few moments here and there nice. and um there were yeah there were a bunch of cool things in there so uh i drove not to i didn't go to cc camp uh in that i went to um uh what was the camp for that um was it emf yeah we went to emf in there there were like 12 of us in there <laughs> who drove from uh Belgium, Belgium to UK. That sounds like that would have been a fun road trip. Were the chairs at the food table? It was a fun trip. It was really cool that, uh, you know, it, it wasn't super crowded. And, uh, uh, even though we were right on top of each other, <laughs> uh, relatively, um, no one hurt each other. <laughs> <laughs> McFly, you were asking were there chairs at the food table? Is that what you said? Well, they have to be, I can't move them, so... <laughs> eh, whatever. Yeah, so at the food table we had um, three, four chairs. The, 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 the table there was a little longer, but if, if, if we have the same table there with two chairs... Um, yeah, that's all that, it looks That's fine, that's fine. Okay, then as long as you, as you have to leave, then I think the correct approach in here would now to be save it, build it, and walk around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. 
That's for sure the largest amount of chairs and tables that we have at any place in the game. Mm. And there is another small detail that we might want to change at the prefab is there is only one soldering iron on the table. Yeah, we'll have to change. Yeah, that. that can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does the, um... And you're right with the point of the table goes into the knees. Yeah. See that? Feels like it's a bit low. But we can fix yeah. that. We can get we can get the model changed. We might need to get get the model changed in a couple of different ones anyway. Yeah. The chairs look kind of reasonable. But in general. Yeah. yeah. The chairs look okay. The tables, I think, should be a bit higher. But that's a small change. Mm -hmm. And there is a food table. We must need to be slightly more to the inside. But in general... Feels like the hardware hacking area. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, it's really cool. It's very cool. It's a bit too green also in the ground. It needs to be browner, but that is my criticism. <laughs> and there's got to be a lot of dust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we still have to add the tour camp sign here for the day. That's something that would be nice. Like, as you, 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 Rich, you, you remember that we were talking about um, having a day and a night variant, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the day variant, there should be a big sign which lights that they took camp. Yep. And the night that should be modified uh, because they rearranged the characters and then the night it actually said, fuck Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure we can do that. I yeah. mean, I, what we want to do is just wait until we get closer to having. Um... I wonder. I mean,. It might be possible. It probably is possible to. Hmm. Okay. I think we want to wait until we get closer to having yeah, all the villages in, and then we'll make a duplicate of it, and we'll do we'll light one version in daylight and light one version in in night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, kind of would like to test it out at some point, but uh, um, I think it's better to finish the whole map first before we start making a second variant of it yeah because otherwise every change we're doing we're doing to the day variant we also then need to do to the night variant and that will just double the work otherwise yep. but that's looking nice that, that really does give so sense this, of the hardware uh, yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope it's so... as happy as I am with this Oh, it's super cool. It really so good we at then some point need to meet again and see how we make Mitch also a figure in there. Yep. <laughs> yep, for sure. Yep. Yeah, were, were there any specific lighting um, things that you guys Yeah, did? so I don't know if this is... Because um, we had some POV displays. I don't know if that's a possibility in uh, VR. <laughs> What, what's what type of display? What's a POV display? POV is um, so uh, uh, right now there's no pole uh, where we had a big POV display, but on the intersection of the road to the right there, mm -hmm. um, and um, to the, there was. Uh, uh, a lot of very, very bright, a column of very, very bright RGB LEDs. Yep. And they were flickering in just such a way that as you walked by out of the corner of your eye, you saw that it was displaying pictures and words. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was pretty neat. Yeah. So that would be pretty hard to do with VR, but maybe we could do something We can make something that represents it. it, for sure. There'll be a way yeah. of doing something. Maybe with them. Um... I think the effect would give it away. Like it could work as an effect. Like if you see for this, that could actually work. Oh, I don't know yeah. if that comes through the mud to through the jitsi. Not 
true. It does actually. Cool. Yeah, when you were rotating back and forth, it, I saw that quite clearly. Yeah, so when you do that, then the, there can be just something that appears that looks streaky and colorful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we also had RGB LEDs up and down all the, the, the posts that he's looking at right now. We had RGB LEDs doing cool things there too. Sure we can. So, but that. There'll be that ways comes to later. try and do some stuff like that with the lighting, definitely. Yeah, that comes later. So oh, I'll do cool. one more thing for a last try. And that is put this one here. So we get an idea how it actually looks. How it will look once it's colored. That's yep. there. Mm -hmm. That is building a lot faster now because we didn't change a lot. And you have memory again. <laughs> no, at the moment I seem to actually have free memory. So. Yeah, mine just been you'd had the project open for a while or something that's causing that. Yeah, this project was open for three to four weeks. Oh, oh that, okay. that'll be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> If there are any bugs, that will make them be uh, manifest. Uh, here, the ladder is still cool. close from the rear of the bus. It looks very cool. Yeah. That's nice. And this bus that doesn't have a collider, but I think this one has. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Also, tent pole pro colliders, do they work? Should do. Yep. Good. Yeah, cool. That actually feels uh, pretty neat. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's be so fun. cool that it, it comes together so quickly. Um, although there's a lot of details, so it's an amazing amount of work that you've done. But I think we should praise the person who did uh, the work the on the model in this case, Absolutely. Uh, which is Electro Um And uh, we really need to praise him for doing all of the work uh, on the model of the tables mm. at the bus here. Yeah, absolutely. That's way cool. Yeah, he's done a great job. And I think we still have to touch it a bit, but this is minor thing. Yeah, it's going to be fun when we start sort of putting... Who is that? Uh, Electropunk from Seabase. Ah, uh, okay. e -punk. Yep, we can put hackable devices yes. and some interactive stuff in in not too long as well, and, and just start telling some little stories around the place as well. That'll be fun. Have oh, that models. would be possibly something that I can show how that looks. We don't have any devices yet then for that. Yeah. We could put like different devices that people are working on on each table. There you go, there's the data view. Because there is no data in there yet, but so there is. Wow. But this is supposed to uh, find all the data related stuff. And so mm -hmm. far, we haven't put any data things in. Mm -hmm. The idea would be the tap, for example, but I think at the unpacking area, we can do a lot more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could make that display that you're talking about, Mitch, um, and make it hackable so that you could change the message on it or something, maybe. Yeah, that'd be fun too. Cool. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna uh, yeah. go to sleep and wake up. Uh, and... Yep. Yeah. Good luck yeah. with your German uh, lessons in the morning, then. So. Thanks, it's been fun. Yep. Cheers, Mitch. We'll speak to you soon. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, good. Good. Good to see ya. Yep. See you. Thank Thanks. you for joining. Ciao. Ciao. You can't see me now because I'm sharing the screen, but feel waved at. Cool. Well, um, that's that's good progress. I think that's, that gives a real sort of extra dimension to, yep. to the area. And I like how much changed already the balloons give. Yeah.
Yeah, it gives a kind of interesting sort of sense of depth. We'll have to change that yeah. skybox uh, soon so that you don't have these big buildings. We'll just make it a regular skybox so that it feels a bit more like camp on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah, I think at the moment it gives a bit of a Central Park feeling. Yeah. We can change that. Right. Have you ever been in New York in Central Park? I have, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. And there is another thing where I would like to change something, but I have no idea how. Yeah. And that is this thing over here. The TARDIS. Um, no, not the TARDIS. The hill. Oh, yeah. Um, I think we need a mesh collider below this. Oh, because you just run into it. Because at the something. moment... Yeah, you... <laughs> yeah. Oh, you should fall forever. No, it's like the hill. What? You should, you should end up falling instead of able to run around under it. It's interesting that you don't. I guess maybe the map underneath. <laughs> so, here... Yeah. Yep. Bugs, 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 bugs. So, yep. because I think it would be cool if we can wrap up Walk here. Up to the top and have a look. And actually take it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's easy enough. You can put, like you said, so put you a collider on instead of a better. box collider. Yeah. Put a mesh collider on it, then that will fit the shape and you'll be able to walk up the slope. So, how do I do that? So, go go find your, uh, your hill. I'm pretty sure that hill is part of the Ziegelei Park. Um, maybe. Yeah. So go into the Ziegler Park. See here it starts. Yep, go into the Ziegler Park uh, prefab. Yep. This is now the Ziegler Park prefab. Can you see the hill over there? I think it's not a separate object. Oh, that's weird. I swear it. Maybe I joined it. Yeah, maybe I did join it all in. So... It's be land, I guess. Okay. I guess it's just part of land. So what you want then is to... Um, Grab the Pro Builder tools. Which were in tools, the tools menu. Oh, there you go, there you go. Yep. And then get the faces selection up. Yep. Select all the faces for that hill. And then there's 
an option in those Pro Builder tools called Detach Faces. Is this already part of the hill? No, I don't know. It's not. It's, it's just um, that's, that you've got everything. Is... Nope, those are flat. So you've got everything that you need. So in the bottom right hand corner in your Pro Builder tools, in the red option, yeah, so there's one detach. detach. Yeah, hit that. Hit the plus or hit the menu. Just hit the actual button. Now it's yeah. its own object, and now because it's its own object, it's now land one. Uh, yeah, so you could rename that, that to hill. Hill, yeah, exactly. And then on the inspector, you can scroll down to the bottom of that. You can remove the box collider. There's a box collider. Yeah, you want to remove that. How do I remove it again? Yeah. Yep. Remove component. Remove component. Yep. And now add component. Type in mesh. Oh, actually, mesh colliders in the mesh option. collider. Yep. And if you. That should be correct. I don't know whether there's a way of sort of seeing what... I don't think you can see what the mesh collider itself is looking like, but it should just map to the, the thing there. And it's not convex, it's concave, so that's fine. So I guess I would just give um, that a quick build and, see, you know, save the scene, build it, and see whether you can walk up and down on it. Yep, and now build it separately. Save you having to run. Save. Save you having to run over there, you could move the player spawn to the hill. Well, I think that will take longer than yeah. I just know. Yeah, that's possible. Oh. Ooh. That's not nice. Why is it done? Well, what is happening with this? So stuff has sort of got a weird offset issue outside of the prefab because in the prefab that looked fine didn't it there was no such yes gap. got the whole zeke park collected yeah Um, okay, in I think that is something that after that I need to push so you can have a debugging look at it. Yeah, yeah. Let's try and work out what's going on. This tent here is also flying in the air, but I think that was this way from the beginning. So we never made a gravity stick to the ground. Well, we can put gravity on stuff, but it, it causes all kinds of other problems if you do make them this object. There's still a small gap in the fabric. I hope I'm now not falling through there. 
But it works. Yeah. I can actually run upstairs. Okay. Yeah. That actually looks pretty cool. Yep. Nice. I think now we're having a good time for that. Yep. I think that's a good place to, to wrap up. And, uh, yep. If you push those changes, I'll try at some point over the next week or something to, uh, have a look again. Um, maybe we can do a small, uh, dev stream where we do a bit more modding. Um, instead of in two weeks time, do one next week during the, during the Steam Games Festival, seeing as the Games Festival got pushed back. Try and, uh, build on something, maybe get the colored versions of the, uh, of those models all in for the yep. hardware hacking area or something. Yep, the tent at Seabase, there's also three, four, five objects that have now more colors. Cool. From what I hear, so that actually is totally possible. Okay, let's wrap it up. Nice. Well, thanks again, McFly, for, uh, taking the steering wheel and, um, getting the, the mod going and uh i guess well I'll, I'll speak to you before then but i'll see you on the stream in a week's time then we'll, we'll do we'll do this again next thursday okay. cool well thanks for watching those of you that are live when, uh, if you're watching i think we need to go on i think we need to thank also mitch and uh epunk who have not been here today, but actually helped a lot. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So, uh, thank you, the two of you. Yep. And thanks, thanks very much, Mitch, for, for swinging by and uh, helping point us to what goes where and chat through what the, the hardware hacking area is all about. So, I'll, I guess um, we'll, um, we'll catch up soon, McFly. See you, and uh, till in one week. Yep. See you then. Bye, everyone.